Warning, the circuitry demonstrated in this video is capable of generating dangerously high levels of current at very low voltages. In addition to the usual precautions taken to avoid injury when working around electricity, special care must be taken to reduce the risk of burn or fire. To top balance a pack of batteries, all the batteries in the pack must be connected in parallel and a battery charger or power supply is used to bring them all up to 100% state of charge all at the same time. This battery pack, much like the battery packs found in any electric vehicle conversion, needs to be top balanced before it can be installed in this electric vehicle. Printable schematics for this battery charger and the overvoltage cutoff circuitry can be found on the drawings section of my website at zuglet.com drawings. In order to bring one lithium battery up to 100% state of charge, a power supply or charger must apply a voltage of no more than 3.6 volts while at the same time never allowing the current to exceed 30 amps. These maximum voltage and current values will vary depending on the battery chemistry and capacity. Check the manufacturer's specifications for your batteries. It would be simple to charge one or two of these lithium batteries using a variable power supply like this one. In fact, this supply was used to top balance four headway lithium batteries for my auxiliary 12 volt lithium battery pack. But for a large pack like this one, it's simply too small. And that's where the old MIG welder comes into play. I'm going to demonstrate how a few key parts from an old MIG welder can be used to build this high current low voltage battery charger for top balancing lithium batteries in a matter of a day or so rather than weeks and months. Here are some of the key parts that go into making a high current battery charger. This is the main piece that I wanted. And this is the, the mother of all transformers. The first key part from the MIG welder is a high current step down transformer. The high voltage low current side has small wires with more windings and the low voltage high current side has heavier wire with very few windings. This is a step down transformer. A high AC voltage and low current are applied to the two small wires and a much lower AC voltage and much higher current is supplied to these three heavy output wires. The transformer is the key to getting the high current and low voltage needed to top balance the large battery pack. The current and voltage coming out of the transformer is AC and needs to be converted to DC, direct current. Which brings us to the next key part, the rectifier. A rectifier converts alternating current into direct current by only letting current pass in one direction. Each of these two transformer terminals is connected directly to the anode of the high current stud rectifiers. The positive or cathode side of the rectifiers are connected together to create a high current DC voltage with some noise or ripple left over from the AC. The rectifier is the most vulnerable part of this system. It also generates the most heat when high current is being drawn. Usually the MIG welder will already have an aluminum heat sink and a fan to keep these parts cool. This welder uses a heat sink to cool the rectifiers and to connect the cathodes directly together. The transformer will also generate a small amount of heat so it should also be cooled with the fan. The transformer, rectifiers, heat sink, and fan are all returned to their original location in the MIG welder cabinet. Since the MIG welder already had a large capacitor between positive and ground, it was also returned to its original location. The capacitor will absorb and smooth out some of the leftover ripple left from the original AC current. Every MIG welder also has a high current inductor which is connected in series with the output. The purpose of this inductor is to help the welder start an arc when welding. The inductor is not necessary when charging batteries and can be left out of this circuit. A current shunt and meter capable of measuring 100 to 200 amps is installed in series with the output of this circuit. Typically you can purchase these on eBay for about $50. You can use a digital or an analog meter, it really doesn't matter. The reason that the current needs to be monitored is to protect the rectifiers and the transformer from overheating and being permanently damaged. If the current is too high, the voltage into the transformer needs to be reduced. 
how this voltage is adjusted is the key to making this whole system work. A variac, also called an auto transformer, is an adjustable transformer. It takes 120 volts AC from your regular household outlet and it converts it into a voltage anywhere between 0 and 130 volts AC. You can find variacs on any electrical engineer's workbench. You can find them also on eBay for about 80 to $100. Make sure that you get one that can handle 15 if not 20 amps. Once the charger has been fully assembled, it's time to do a test on a small group of batteries to make sure everything is working properly and to get a feel for charging batteries. The output cables from the charger should be 4 gauge or heavier. You should not use alligator or jumper cable style clips. These types of clips do not make enough contact with the battery terminals and will get very hot when high current is passed through such a small area of contact. That heat can cause permanent damage to your batteries. Instead, use ring style terminals that can be crimped onto the wire and bolted directly to the battery terminals for a low resistance connection. This connection will not get hot. An accurate digital voltmeter should be connected directly to the same battery terminals as the charger. This connection should be made right at the battery terminals. Alligator style clips are okay here since very little current will be flowing through these connections. The meter will display the current resting voltage for the batteries. For lithium batteries this will be about 3.2 volts. With the variac turned all the way down, apply power to the charger. Slowly turn up the variac while closely monitoring the system current and the battery voltage. You can see the current increasing. The current going into the batteries is increasing. And the battery voltage is also increasing. And right there, that's over 100 amps right there. Got over 100 amps going into these batteries right now. Continue to turn up the variac until the maximum amperage is reached or until the maximum battery voltage is reached. If the batteries are at less than 90% state of charge, it'll be a while before the maximum charging voltage is reached. So the first part of the charging cycle will be monitoring and regulating the current. As the batteries pass 90% state of charge and approach 100% state of charge, the voltmeter will show that the maximum charging voltage has been reached. As soon as this voltage is reached, begin to turn the variac down a little bit. The current into the system will drop, and so will the battery voltage. But since you're still charging these batteries, the battery voltage will again begin to creep up. And once again, you need to turn the variac down a little bit to prevent the battery pack voltage from exceeding the maximum voltage. Continue with this procedure until the amp meter drops to almost zero while the maximum battery voltage is still being maintained. This is an extremely interactive process at this point when you get to your float voltage of 3.6 because I, this power supply or charger or whatever you want to call it is totally unregulated. So I've got to keep an eye on my voltage across my front battery here and I cannot let it get above 3.6 volts. So if you have to leave, you got to shut this whole system down because you can't let this thing, you cannot let this system go unattended. This is why I've also provided a schematic diagram for an optional high voltage cutoff circuit to shut down the charger as soon as a preset voltage is reached. This was my first experience manually charging lithium batteries, so doing a few practice runs on smaller groups of batteries gave me a good sense of what it feels like to charge and top balance these batteries. To top balance the entire pack, all of the batteries, including the ones from the practice runs, are connected in parallel using the connecting straps that will be used in the final installation and also some heavy jumper wires. The same steps are followed with the larger pack. Now just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to show that I can take this charger up to 200 amps. And there you have it. That's 200 amps going into my batteries. My resting my current float voltage, 3.37 volts. 
200 amps. I'm not going to leave it there. It's going to get things too hot, so I'm going to back it off. Once the battery pack is at the maximum charging voltage and the charging current is close to zero, measure the voltage of the batteries that are farthest away from the charging connections. The voltage at these batteries might read a little bit lower because they are not yet fully charged due to a small voltage drop in the jumpers. Continue to monitor and hold the voltage at the first battery for a few more hours until all the batteries reach the maximum charging voltage. The current required to hold this voltage will be very small so the big manual charger can be disconnected and put aside and an adjustable power supply can be used without being monitored so closely. This is a manually regulated power supply that, uh, that's been built here. And by manually, that means that you or me, the operator, needs to monitor the current and the voltage at all times because the current and the voltage is going to fluctuate drastically and that's going to all depend on the load that the batteries are putting on the charger and it's also going to depend on the position of the variac. So a lot of factors will come into play and you need to adjust that variac to make sure that you're not exceeding the current capabilities of this charger and you're not exceeding the voltage of these batteries and that's both of them are very critical because if you put too much voltage on your batteries you're going to ruin your batteries if you put too much current in your charger you're going to burn up your charger the first thing that surprised me as I was charging these lithium batteries was just how long it took, how much current I could put into these batteries before the voltage would even start to really come up at all. And that was the first thing that surprised me. And the second thing that surprised me was just how quickly the voltage on those batteries did come up once I approached that 90% to 100% state of charge. Both of those things can take you off guard. The second one, if it takes you off guard, you can ruin your batteries because you can very quickly exceed that voltage because as I said, this is an unregulated battery charger. And that's why it's a good idea to use my over voltage uh, protection circuitry or to use an adjustable power supply to top the battery pack off at 90 to 100%. This Variac technique can also be used with a manual battery charger like this one. Not a smart charger like this. This one won't work. This one's too intelligent. This is a dumb charger. It's just a transformer and a rectifier and a current meter. Um, you can use the Variac technique with any old uh, manual charger to uh, charge lithium batteries. But again, once you use the Variac, it's manual and uh, you need to keep your eye on the voltage. 